Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters of Divine Mercy Prayer Group and all those who watch me and listen to me, wish you all a very good evening. Some days ago, I spoke to you about the apologetics. The Catholic apologetics would help us to understand what we believe, why we believe the same, and what are the scriptural basis for what we believe. Saint Peter in his first letter, chapter 3 verse 15, he said, we must be always ready to give an account of our faith, of our hope. So therefore, I took another subject today in relation to Catholic apologetics. The title of today's sharing is Apologetics and Confession. All of us are sinners and therefore all of us need to confess. We confess directly to God or to another person or the question may be there, how can a sinner like us can forgive our sins? Let us go deep into this subject. A group of German tourists came to India. They landed at Mumbai airport and they happened to pass through the Dharavi slums. And seeing the people crowded there, living together, very crowded and surrounded by a lot of dirts. One of the tourists asked a person standing there, My dear friend, why do you live in this dirt? And that man looked around and asked a question, Where is dirt? Living in dirt, surrounded by dirt, the person lost his, lost his awareness that he and the people there are living in that dirt, dirty situation. Sin is somewhat like that now. People of this age, this modern time, are not aware of their sinfulness. And therefore, let us look into the Bible to know whether their sin exists from the very beginning, whether the sin exists now, and the sin also may continue to exist and uh, hound us in our day-to-day -day life. For example, the first letter of John, chapter 1, verse 8, we read, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Therefore, all of us are sinners, and there are sin with us or within us. And we have to cleanse ourselves. Again, the word of God, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, we read, All have sinned and fall short of glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, no one is exempted. Of course, we know Mother Mary is exempted. She is immac immaculate. She was concealed without sin. And she did not yield to sin of any sort. So her complete life was sinless. But all other human beings have committed sin. You know, John the Baptist was cleansed at the very womb of his mother. And he was given the life in the spirit in the very womb of his mother, Elizabeth. But all of us are sinners. Romans chapter 3 verse 10. Again we read, There is no one who is righteous, not even one. Again we read in Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all, because all have sinned. Romans 
chapter 5 verse 12 therefore my dear brothers and sisters God has given the authority for the people to forgive sins if there is no sin why people should be given authority to sin therefore my dear brothers and sisters my dear friends sin is a reality if sin is a reality at the same time we have got that hope we have got that faith that Jesus Christ has defeated Satan and he has overcome sinfulness and he has achieved our for, uh, achieved forgiveness for all of us Jesus Christ has achieved the forgiveness through his suffering through his death and his resurrection and therefore the existence of sin is clear only the tragedy of the world today is we are not aware of our sinfulness the 3 cc the catechism of the catholic church one whole article article 8 and numbers 1846 to 1869 about 23 paragraphs are speaking about sin and if there is no sin why so much of description about various kinds of sin mortal sin venial sin and sins, sins like that so my dear brothers and sisters please remember sin is a reality and however sin is reality and strongly present amidst us we have got that faith we have got that confidence with the help of Jesus Christ we can overcome our sinfulness Pope Pius XII in 1946 through his radio message to the participants in the National Catechetical Congress of the United States in Boston he made this statement please listen the greatest sin of our time is losing the sense of sin I repeat the greatest sin of our time is losing the sense of sin again Pope John Paul II now uh, uh, Saint John Paul II he also made this statement the current tragic situation which seems to have forsaken certain fundamental moral values is largely due to the laws of the sins of sin the lack of the consciousness of sin is a, is a big tragedy of the modern time and people go on doing all kinds of sinful deeds and at no prick of conscience no prick of conscience and therefore that is the tragedy of the present time we are living a young man recently I watched on TV channel a young man killed both of his parents and he had only one sister and he managed to kill her as well why why he killed his own parents and his own sister he started watching the pornographic uh, sites or visiting porn pictures and he started using drugs and then eventually uh, he started uh, committing masturbation and uh, the sin one after maybe a smaller one and then uh, into the next one bit more serious like that and he got addicted to drugs and then he had to spend a lot of money he had to find money to buy the costly drugs and he wanted to enjoy his life very badly wrongly and therefore for that he needed money therefore he killed his own parents and sister and uh, the huge uh, property of his family he could uh, he could own it for himself his intention was to sell his property and get that huge amount and then spend it go to a faraway place and spend it the way he wanted like the prodigal son and he committed the serious sins of murder 
Why? Because one by one, little by little, he violated the, the voice of the conscience, his own conscience, and then he was formed by the conscience of the world. And the world says, don't worry, there is no sin. There is no sin. Enjoy life. Whatever way, whichever way you can find pleasure for yourself, whichever way you can enjoy, go on. Don't worry about sin. That's why St. Paul, in his letter to Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he said very clearly, don't conform yourself to the standard of the world. Instead, renew yourself by the help of God. And therefore, don't conform yourself to the standard of the world. As I mentioned another occasion, and I would like to repeat that, the world is a place where, where Satan dwells. And he entices the people and misguide, misguides the people and wrongly convincing them there is nothing wrong in doing any sin. First of all, there is no sin at all. Enjoy your life. That is why, again, in 1st John or James chapter 4, James chapter 4 verse 4 says, Don't you know that relationship or being friendly or developing friendship with the world, you are making yourself enemy to God? So friendship to the world is enmity towards God. Remember, God has no enmity to anyone. God is love. God is perfect. God is very compassionate. God is light. God is truth. But the liar, who is the, uh, the, the father of the lies and lies, Satan, he dwelling in the world and bringing to our attention the big celebrities, famous people in the society, doing wrong things, committing sin, and then divorcing uh, the partner and the sin of different kinds and living together without marriage and what sort of sorts of sins are committed in the world and the devil will say don't worry there is no sin so my dear brothers and sisters sin is a reality if sin is a reality there is this truth as well the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. First John chapter 1 verse 7. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Again, first John chapter 2 verse 2. Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. I repeat, Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for our sins only but also for the sins of the whole world. So Jesus Christ has achieved forgiveness for our sins and the sins of the whole world. Even though Jesus Christ has achieved forgiveness, we need to appropriate it. We need to make that freedom from sin or slavishness to devil, we have to make it our own. How? We can experience the forgiveness of God if we confess our sins. Confession of sins is a must in order to experience the forgiveness that Jesus Christ has achieved through his incarnation, his suffering, death and resurrection. In short, we call it his Paschal mystery. So I repeat from 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. Those who listen to me and if you can see what is shown on the screen, you can also read with me. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, confession of sins. Before confessing, we need to become aware of the sin that we have committed and we have to repent over the sins. That is why in the Gospel of Luke chapter 24, uh, towards the end we read, 
repentance of the sins to be preached to the whole world, to the whole humanity, because, because all human beings committed sin and they need to repent over the sin and confess the sins in order to achieve that forgiveness, in order to experience that God has forgiven our sins. Confess to whom? Directly to God. Who can forgive sins? But God alone. Certain people say it's enough to confess God. We read in the first John, confession of sin is necessary to achieve forgiveness. And whom to confess? In first John chapter 1 verse 9, it is not mentioned whom to make our confession. So some people think it's enough that we confess directly to God. And God forgives our sins. Now in the Gospel of Mark chapter 2 verse 7, we find a paralytic being brought to Jesus while he was preaching in a house. And he, the, the, the whole house was filled with the people. People were eagerly listening the, the message of the kingdom of God preached by Jesus. And there brought a paralytic on the stretcher. And uh, they could not uh, make, take the paralytic through the door. So they climbed over the roof, removed some tiles, and dropped uh, the paralytic right to in front of Jesus. And seeing the faith, faith of the people, he said, my dear son, your sins are forgiven. And then the people listened to him, questioned in their mind, who can forgive sins but God alone? And then in order to prove that Jesus had authority to forgive sin, in, un, in, in another, or in other words, he was God himself, he said to, to the paralytics, son, your sins are forgiven. And uh, the question in the mind of the people there, especially the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were questioning in their mind, who is this? Only God can forgive sin. And this carpenter, son of Joseph, son of Mary, is uh, telling that he has forgiven the sin. Only God can forgive the sin. That was very strongly in their mind. And Jesus continued saying, which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take up your mat and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go to your home. And immediately you know what happened. The paralytic stood up. He took his mat and walked out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Son of Man has got the authority to forgive sins. Yes, it is the authority of God. And Jesus showed that he is the Son of God or he is God himself. That's why he said in the Gospel of John chapter 14, verse 6, and Jesus said, See, I am with you these uh, uh, period of time more than three years with you or about three years with you and don't you uh, understand that whoever sees me sees the father I and the father are one and therefore Jesus Christ showed his authority for to, to forgive sins and uh, as a sign of your authority to forgive sins he asked the paralytic to get up stand up Take your mat and go home. And he immediately stood up, took his mat and went home. My dear brothers and sisters, that's what we read in the Gospel of Mark chapter 2. Chapter two. From the very beginning you can read that passage. And again, Jesus giving authority. Jesus had authority to forgive sins. And therefore, he shared that authority to uh, Peter. We read about it in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth 
will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven binding and loosing and it is reference uh, referred to sin so jesus who had authority to forgive sin and he exercised applied that authority and also he gave that authority we see to peter as we see in the gospel of matthew chapter 16 after peter uh, professing his faith you are the son of the living god you are the messiah and again uh, for giving this authority to more than one person we come across about it in the gospel of matthew chapter 9 again it is the contest is the paralytic being brought to in front of jesus and jesus told him your sins are forgiven and then he asked him to get up take up the mat and go home and immediately he got up as i mentioned quoting gospel of mark chapter 2 now in the gospel of matthew chapter 9 verse 8 seeing when the crowds saw this man getting up at the command of jesus they were filled with awe and they glorified god who had given such authority to human beings i repeat they were filled with awe and they glorified god who had given such authority to human beings praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah god who is a forgiving god compassionate god merciful god he became man he became like us in the person of jesus christ and jesus christ exercised that authority and power to forgive sins and he shared that authority to people and therefore another occasion we read in the book of james chapter 5 verse 16 where saint james says confess your sins to one another the context is that if anyone falls sick go bring the authority of priest or the elder of the church and a holy man praying for the people uh, the people may get healed but if you are committed sins confess your sins to each other confess your sins to each other and therefore some people uh question why i told we should go to a particular priest alone it is said confess your sins to each other to anyone you know what was the problem of confessing the sin to anyone that secret of confession secrecy of the confession is not kept and there were problems in families there were problems in society the the individual who made a confession to another person that per- person divulged the secret of what he confessed or she confessed then the family problems uh, arose out of that therefore not confessing to each other we have to confess to particular persons the church has authorized the church has got the authority that the, the teaching authority uh, given by jesus himself and therefore jesus told the disciples as we read in gospel of matthew chapter 28 jesus said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go to the whole world and baptize of people of all nations in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and uh, he instructed them to teach them all that i commanded to you remember i am with you till the end of the age jesus who established the church also gave his authority to them to forgive sins therefore we also read in the gospel of john chapter 20 verse 22 John 20 22 Jesus Christ after his resurrection appeared to the disciples in their closed room and when he appeared to them to the second time first time St Thomas was not there second time when Thomas also was there he appeared and he said to them peace be with you gospel of John chapter 20 verse 21 and the following and then he told them 
received the Holy Spirit. And he breathed on them saying, receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a person. And that person dwelling within us gives us the authority. And therefore Jesus said, those whose sins that you forgive will be forgiven. Those whose sins you retain will be retained. So Jesus giving authority not only to one person, Peter, now a group of disciples or apostles together and he gave them the power of the Holy Spirit and also the authority to forgive sins. Therefore, it is there in the Bible, example, God giving his authority or sharing his authority to forgive sins with human beings. Not with all human beings. Remember, take note that the authorized persons from the church First of all, the authorized person is bishop. The, the bishops are the descendants of the apostles. And bishops are given the authority to forgive sins. And bishop cannot hear the confession of all the people in a diocese. Remember in this vicariate, in this diocese, uh, uh, how many uh, faithful are there? It is said maybe half a million or uh, much more than uh, half a million people faithful are there. How can bishop hear the confession of all? Therefore, bishop is given authority to share the authority he received from the Pope, the head of the church, with the other priests specially chosen from the people. Therefore, a priest specially chosen by the church is authorized to hear confessions and he is given authority to forgive sins. You know, he forgives the sins using the authority church uh, gives him. And church received that authority from God himself. And you remember the words of absolution. He, he, abs uh, he absolves the sins, not with his own authority, but the authority Christ and church gave to him. God the Father of mercies through the death and resurrection of his Son has reconciled the world to himself and the Holy Spirit for, to, 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 uh, forgive, to give forgiveness. So through the ministry of the church, the, the formula of absolution, through the ministry of the church, may God give, forgive your sins and I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is in the name and the authority God gave to the priest, a priest who, who is the representative of God from God's side, and he is also the representative of the humanity, the people. One, when a person commits sin, he offends God, he offends the people, and uh, we do not know, we won't be able to reach out to all the people who experienced the consequences of our sins. However simple a sin of a person, the consequences reach to the ends of the world one way or other. You take a stone and put in a very still water in the well and uh, uh, the waves of that water, it moves to the end of the to the whole well. In the same way, a person committing sin anywhere in the world has far-reaching consequences. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have got this privilege to make your confession to a priest who is chosen from among the people who represent God and represent the people and you are confessing your sin will be, uh, you are confessing your sin to the priest will be equal to confessing to God and also confessing to the people because the priest represents God as well as the people. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have got that uh, privilege to make our confession and whatever we confess to the priest, it remain a secret. The priest receiving, hearing what you confess, he surrenders it or them into the hands of God. And uh, don't worry, uh, this priest know, uh, knows me. How can I say this into him that he may look at me 
accordingly, oh, this man, this woman committed that kind of sin, a priest will not remember what the penitent confessed. And he is also uh, given the commandment, the order to keep the confessional secrecy. My dear brothers and sisters, now coming back to the question, is it enough to confess God directly? Or the question, how can a human being who is sinful like us can forgive our sins? And we, from the scriptural passages, we understood that no one has the authority to forgive sins, only God. But God gives or shares that authority to the chosen people. He gave that authority mainly to the church. And the church authorizes bishops, priests or to hear confessions and given, given authority, the faculty to absolve the sins of penitents. So my dear brothers and sisters, these days as church is locked down, even though it is opened partially, we are not permitted to hear confessions and therefore many people called me, Father, will you kindly hear my confessions? And because of some serious reasons, like a person before going to a hospital for a surgery, or a pregnant woman before going uh, for the delivery, and uh, serious reasons like that, then we were hearing confessions exceptionally. But we are not permitted to hear confessions these, these days. But the people are suffocated. The guilt feeling within make them so, uh, so feeling guilty and heavy in their mind. And therefore, church is still, again, generous and careful, concerned of her children, the faithful. That is why tomorrow and day after tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, before all the masses celebrated with the people in the church, there will be general absolution. There you can repent over your sins and you can receive the absolution, forgiveness through the priest. Only with the condition you have to make your confession whenever it is possible to an individual priest. There was a Protestant pastor who was ridiculing the sacrament of confession in the church and he also uh, communicated to the people the uselessness, uselessness of making confession to a priest who is a human being, a sinner like us. One day, his own people found him coming out from a Catholic church. And they asked, Pastor, oh, what business you have got in the Catholic church? And he said, I went to make a confession because I wanted to hear God telling me, my dear son, your sins are forgiven. Listen, the statement a Protestant pastor made. I went to church, Catholic church, to make confession so that I can hear through the words of the priest, the voice of God or God himself telling me, my dear son, your sins are forgiven. So my dear brothers and sisters, church, our mother is there to help us to overcome our sinfulness by making a very good confession after repenting over our sins. Advantage of confession again. Carl Jung in Vienna was a psychiatrist. And Vienna is a country where mostly, uh, most of the people, majority are Catholics. And yet he said, the patients who came for treatment, for counseling, were Jews and Protestants and not Catholics. Only a very very minor, very less percentage of Catholics came to me for psychiatric treatment. And he gave this reason. You know why? Because they have got the sacrament of confession. And in the confessional, they can drop down or surrender all their guilt feeling to God. And God released them. And those 2% of, or less than 2% of Catholics who came to me for psychiatric treatment were the Catholics who were not using their 
opportunity, the, the, the privilege to make confession and to go to the sacrament of reconciliation. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to conclude this session of sharing with you one of my experiences. After, shortly after my ordination, I was put as a member of the mission preaching team. I joined the team and we used to preach in the morning and in the evening. And in between, we used to visit houses. It was my turn to visit a particular area. And uh, after the morning preaching and breakfast uh, with the uh, sacristan or the helper, I started visiting houses. And uh, it was time for me to come back to the church. And only a couple of houses more. I was deadly tired like. And when I entered in a particular house, I found certain things covered right at the middle of the courtyard. I just noticed something covered. I entered the house and uh, uh, blessed the house. And then I asked, is there any problem that you would like to share with the priest? Is any 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 problem with the neighbors or anything uh, you would like to share? And they said, no father, nothing. And then I found what is covered at the very center of the courtyard. Uh, what is that that we kept covered there? And uh, only two ladies were there, Mary, a daughter, and her mother. And her mother said, uh, Father, it is copra. You know that the coconut we used to keep on, on the sunlight to get it dried. And towards the evening, we thought of covering it. And actually, what was that copra? It was the head of the family. The head of the family was a drunkard. And he used to drink uh, very badly and come home measuring the roads. And one of the neighboring uh, family child saw this man coming home and he rushed to this house, his daughter Mary. And Mary told, to the Mary, the child told, your dad is coming, measuring the road. And the priest also coming. He is in the neighboring house. And then uh, Mary looked out and uh, saw her dad reach the gate there. Somehow she wanted to uh, reach him inside the home. But he was a, such a gigantic person and he fell down in the courtyard. She tried to pull him to the room. She couldn't. He called her mother also. Mommy, come. Priest also reached here. Here lies uh, my dad. And both of them hold it together, or either hands, try to pull inside. As that man was very heavy, gigantic size of man, they could not uh, pull him inside. Then how to keep him covered? The priest already reached uh, near the gate. Mary rushed in and brought a tarpaulin and covered him. And they, both of them, entered the house. And when I asked her, what is that? that you are kept covered. And she said, it is copra coconut that we covered. As I was drinking in the water they gave, I saw this copra moving. And I asked, is that copra moving or I feel giddy, giddiness? And I, I think it is moving. Slowly the copra not only moved, it also started calling, Mary, my dear, dear friends, you can... Uh, you can think of the embarrassment of that wife. He said, Father, we told a lie. He is the head of the family. He is such a good man. During the daytime, he is very good. But towards the evening, he comes fully drunk and make, makes our home a hell-like place. To cut short this long story, I asked the mother there, will you kindly send him to meet me? And I spoke to this man when he came on the following day. And I invited him to attend the retreat. And I encouraged him to make a good confession. He did make a good confession. And he stopped drinking. I came to know he stopped drinking. And he lived six years more without drinking a drop of alcohol. Confession has got the power to help the people to overcome their sinfulness, their addictions, and we can become 
truly free. May God bless you all and make use, enable you to make use this wonderful sacrament, sacrament of reconciliation, penance, or confession known by different names. May God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Subscribe to our YouTube channel Divine Mercy Sharjah and hit the bell icon to be the first to receive preaching videos by Brother Alfred. Watch, share and evangelize.